Hello and just hello everyone. Welcome to class 12 biology. In our previous video on chapter 13 organisms and populations, we discussed about some of the important attributes of population. In this video, we will be discussing about population growth. And regarding population growth, we will talk about some of the processes that affect population growth. And we will talk about population growth models. Two of the population growth models, they are exponential growth model and logistic growth model. Now in nature, the size of a population does not remain static. It keeps on changing from time to time. The number of individuals within a population, it can increase or decrease based upon the availability of food, predation pressure, weather conditions, uh, spread of diseases, etc. So these can be the ultimate reasons of changes in the population size. But in your textbook, it is given that the population density of a location, it fluctuates due to four basic processes. Those four basic processes are natality, mortality, immigration and emigration. So these four words are important. You have to remember the definitions of these words, right? So natality means number of births in a population in a particular span of time. So basically it means birth rate, but how many individuals are born in a population in a particular span of time. So that is natality. Mortality is the opposite of natality. Mortality means number of deaths in a population in a particular span of time. So basically mortality means death rate. Okay, so mortality and natality, they play an important role in the changes in population density. Now we also have got immigration and emigration. Immigration and emigration are two forms of migration. So in immigration, number of individuals of the same species that have come into habitat from some other habitat during a particular time. So in immigration process, individuals, they come from some other location into the population, thereby increasing the population uh, density. So that is immigration, whereas emigration is the opposite of immigration. In emigration, number of individuals of the population, they leave the habitat during a particular time. Okay, so emigration means the individuals who leave a particular habitat right, in a particular time. So that is emigration. So these are uh, two forms of migration. Whereas natality and mortality, they are birth rate and death rate. So in, uh, in a general process or uh, in, in a common nat nature occurrence, natality and mortality, they play an important role in changes in population density within an area. Okay. So in your textbook, this particular diagram is given. Right? It shows the four uh, processes and how they affect the population density. So over here, you can see that immigration and natality they add to the population density. They increase the population density. Therefore, they are pointed towards the population density and it is showing uh, plus signs over here, addition signs, right? Because of immigration and because of natality, the population density increases. Whereas mortality and emigration, they reduces the population density. Therefore, the arrows are pointing away from the population and it is showing negative signs over here. So how do we calculate the population density at a particular time? So we can use this formula to calculate population density at a particular time. So n t plus 1, it means uh, population density at time t plus 1 is equal to population density at time t plus b plus i minus d plus e. b plus i is immigration or natality plus uh, immigration. d plus e is mortality plus emigration. So it is clear from this particular formula that uh, Population density, it will increase if the number of net, uh, birth and number of immigration is more than number of death plus number of emigration. So the population density will increase if that is the case. Right? And the population density will reduce if the number of mortality and number of immigration is more than number of immigration and number of natality. So you have to remember this diagram along with its interpretation. And the formula is also important. Now let us talk about population growth models. So environmental scientists, they use population growth models to describe or to predict how a population in a given habitat will change in a particular time. Okay. So we have got two growth models. So first one is exponential growth model or exponential growth. In this particular uh, model, we assume that in a habitat, the resources are unlimited for an organism. 
So what will happen to the population of that particular organism who gets an unlimited resource within its habitat? The organisms, they will reproduce at its maximum capacity and its population will grow exponentially. And their population growth can be represented by this particular graph over here. The population size will keep on increasing in a very short amount of time. So this is called as exponential growth. Right? And this particular blue line can be represented by this formula dn by dt is equal to rn where r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase so r is nothing but birth rate minus death rate birth rate minus death rate is r it will be positive if birth rate is more than death rate it will be negative if, if uh, birth rate is less than death rate so r is called as the intrinsic rate of natural increase so this is one important parameter right and if you integrate this particular uh, formula you get this uh, equation nt is equal to n naught e to the power rt right where nt is the population density after time t and n naught is the population density at time zero initial population and r is equal to the intrinsic rate we already described this one death rate birth rate minus death rate and e is the the base of natural logarithm right so over here it is a theoretical situation where a habitat has got unlimited resource for a organism and the organism it will reproduce at its maximum capacity and its population will increase exponentially so in nature it doesn't happen like that in nature the resources are limited right so it cannot be true but this is a hypothetical one right it's a theoretical one so uh, therefore you have got the first model is exponential growth model Right, where the population increases exponentially now in order to understand the scale of exponential growth you have to read the story on page 230 on in your textbook and you read this particular story it's like a fable in which it shows the scale of exponential growth okay and the second population growth model is logistic growth model in logistic growth uh, we say that limited resources of habitat will have the habitat support a maximum possible number of organism and that is called as carrying capacity so the key term over here is the carrying capacity what does the term carrying capacity mean the maximum number of organisms a habitat can support that is called as its carrying capacity and why does a habitat has a carrying capacity because the habitat has limited resource and out of the two growth models exponential and logistic growth models logistic growth model is said to be more realistic right it is unrealistic to think of a habitat having uh, unlimited resources for the organisms right a habitat will always have limited resources when you think about resources you can think about food uh, water shelter prey etc right so these resources are always available for the organism in limited amount so therefore out of the two growth models logistic growth model is said to be more realistic so in this particular graph the blue line it represents the logistic growth the red line represents exponential growth when uh, there are unlimited resources available for organism the organism will continue to grow exponentially in logistic growth right there is a dotted line over here which represents the carrying capacity of the habitat right so it is represented by letter k so the dotted line over here it represents the carrying capacity the maximum number of individuals or the organisms that a habitat can support right? because of the limitations of resources available okay so uh, you can see the manner in which the population grows you can look at the blue line over here right? and uh, this is called as the logistic growth because uh, when the graph hits carrying capacity the population it becomes stable right? it can it cannot go beyond the carrying capacity of the habitat uh, you can think about a jungle in which uh, only two tigers can survive because of the limitations in resources like prey right? it, there are limited numbers of uh, deer available so the tigers they, they can uh, only two tigers can survive in that particular jungle now what will happen if an extra tiger is added to that particular jungle so there will be competition right and the weaker one will be eliminated right? so uh, nature takes care of the population growth in this particular manner because of the limitations in resources available to the organism so 
uh, out of the two growth models, logistic growth model is more realistic. Okay? And you should remember the formula for uh, exponential growth and the formula for logistic growth. In the logistic growth, we have to take the factor, carrying capacity factor into account. Right? So the letter K is included in the formula over here. In uh, exponential growth, the letter K is not included because there we have assumed that the habitat has got unlimited resources. Therefore, we don't worry about the carrying capacity of the habitat. Okay, so uh, that is about the true growth models. Okay, now in the next video, we will discuss about population interactions and life history variation. Right? That will be the final part of this particular chapter that is organisms and populations. Okay, so read about population interactions and life history variation, especially about different types of population interactions. Okay, thank you.